Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about two-dimensional collisions, and we're going to hit the ground running, especially since we just did one-dimensional collisions. So when it comes to two-dimensional collisions, there are two key points. One, momentum is conserved. This was of course true for all our one-dimensional collisions, it is true here as well, with one addendum. The axes are independent, which means putting those two things together, momentum is conserved on each individual axis which means momentum initial on the X equals momentum final on the X, and momentum initial on the Y equals momentum final on the Y. Now, instead of lecturing about it, I'm just going to do two examples to really get the idea across, because I believe it will make more sense to teach it this way. So without further ado, let's get into our examples. First, a 3,000 kilogram pickup truck traveling east at 18 meters a second has a collision with a 2,000 kilogram car that was moving north. The cars entangle and move in the direction of 38 degrees east of north as a single mass. The driver of the car claims he was moving at 20 meters per second or lower. Let's assume that was the speed limit. Is he telling the truth? Okay, the one big difference in technique here I recommend that's different from other problems we've done is to actually create your givens list in the drawing. So I'm going to describe to you what that drawing should be. First, a 3,000 kilogram pickup truck traveling east at 18 meters per second. I'm actually going to draw that vector. Mass A, 3,000 kilograms. Velocity A initial, 18 meters a second. Now, and this is extremely important. This is not a velocity vector. This is a momentum vector. It is basically momentum initial X. But since mass A is the only object that actually has an X velocity, it is also the only object that has the X momentum initially. So that makes momentum A initial 54,000 kgm over S. This has a collision with a 2,000 kilogram car going north. Velocity B initial is unknown is what we are looking for. He says he's going 20 meters a second, but that is not confirmed, so it is useless. It is definitely not a given. However, this is where the collision occurs. The cars entangle and move in the direction of 38 degrees east of north. So here's north. 38 degrees east of north is approximately here, where this is 38 degrees. The combined mass is 5,000 kilograms. And right now, this is all we know. So this combines my vector drawing and my givens list all in one. And the reason why I recommend doing this is because it keeps track of everything that's happening on each individual axis. And you need to remember the axes are independent of each other. So you're either working with one or you're working in the, in the other, but you're never working in both at the same time. To go back to an earlier rule, I have a vector at an angle to my major axes here. And anytime you have a vector at an angle, you are always breaking it up. This vector is going upward and to the right. Now, to connect with my rules, this is the only object that has initial x momentum. And this component is the only part that has a final x momentum. So momentum final on the x-axis must be 54,000 kg MRS. Now, what is the one thing that connects the two axes? Well, it is this angle. Since I have this opposite side, and this is a right angle, I can use tangent to get the adjacent side here. So momentum final y is 69117 kg m over s. And again, these are momentums. So just on a side while we're here, another question that could be asked is what is the velocity of the combined wreckage? If I have these two sides, I can get momentum total, which is 87,711 kg m over s. Take your momentum divided by the mass, I get velocity final total of 70.5 meters a second at 38 degrees east of north. So this is one possible thing that could be asked for. But in the case of our problem, we actually still need to find out whether the person driving in the car was telling the truth or not. So let's find out. If momentum final y is this value, then momentum initial y, in other words, momentum b initial, because it was the only object on the y-axis, must be 69117 kg m over s. Since momentum is mass times velocity, I take his momentum, divide by his mass, and I get a velocity of 34.6 meters per second. So he was not telling the truth. And as a little side note, there are actually people who do this for a living. Go to scene of accidents and reconstruct what happened and see who is telling the truth and who is not. This person is going to be in a lot of trouble. All right, while I'm here, I'll mention one more thing. 2D collisions, you're almost always dealing with two types, inelastic, and the explosion type. Elastic can be done and use the exact same principles, but they're a little rare to see because they usually take a little longer to do. All right, on that note, let me show you an explosion. A 57 kilogram asteroid is moving with the velocity of 2.03 meters per second at 50 degrees above the negative x-axis. 
a gas pocket in the asteroid explodes, splitting it into two parts. One part, 35 kilograms, has a final velocity of 6.5 meters a second along the net of X axis. What is the velocity of the other part? So, mass is 57 kilograms, initial velocity is 2.03 meters per second, at 50 degrees above the negative X axis. So two things. One, again, these vectors are momentum vectors. They are absolutely not velocity vectors. If you try to use velocity vectors in this technique, it will not work because velocity is not conserved. Momentum is conserved. So momentum initial is 115.7 kgm of rest. And another thing, Considering I have a vector at an angle, and I know I'm going to need to do it anyway, because you're going to need to do it every single time, I'm going to break it up right now. Because any vector you see at an angle in physics, you're always going to break up. Momentum initial x using cosine will give me 74.37 kgm of rest. Momentum initial on the y using sine will give me 88.63 kgm of rest. Here is the explosion. The gas pocket in the asteroid explodes, splitting into two parts. One part, 35 kilograms, has a final velocity of 6.5 meters second along the negative x axis. So it flies directly this way. I'll call this object mass A, 35 kilograms, velocity A final, 6.5 meters per second along the negative x-axis, which means momentum final A is 227.5 kgm over S. I'm going to move this over here so I can do a little work. Okay, so looking at this, this asteroid splits. There is an initial momentum on the Y. The final momentum for this piece is only on the X. Therefore, we definitely have a final momentum on the Y. And that final momentum on the Y has to be the same as the initial momentum on the Y, 88.63 kilograms meters per second. So the question here becomes, what about the X axis? Well, I'll go back to my statement. Momentum initial X equals momentum final X. Momentum initial X, there's only one of them. However, momentum final X is going to be momentum final A X plus momentum final B X. That is going to be negative 74.37 kgm of rest equals negative 227.5 kgm of rest. They are both negative because these vectors are to the left plus momentum final B on the X. Is momentum final B on the X axis to be 153.1 kg MRS, which means the second part of the asteroid split upward and to the right. Momentum final B on the X, where this is B on the Y, 153.1 kg MRS, which means this is the final vector direction, and this is the angle I'm looking for. Using Pythagorean's theorem, momentum final is 176.9 kg MRS. The combined final mass is going to be 22 kilograms. I will do the final calculation down here. Velocity is momentum over mass, 176.9 kg of rest over 22 kilograms. Kilograms cancels, and I get a speed of 8.04 meters per second. Using inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, I get theta is 59.9 degrees, which means my actual answer is 8.04 meters a second at 59.9 degrees right of positive y. So this is basically a puzzle. And the big deal is you are, one, dealing with the axes individually. The first thing I did here was split into x and y so I can deal with it in x and y terms. Once I knew one of the rocks was only on the x, that means this y momentum had to stay in the final because it is conserved on the y-axis. Then I found the missing piece on the x-axis to make sure the x-axis is conserved. Then I just put those two pieces together to get the result vector. And the vectors are momentum vectors, not velocity vectors. That's why I had to get this final momentum vector first before I went after the velocity. Divide by the mass of this piece of the asteroid. Since one piece was 35, the other one had to be 22 because the original was 57. Divide momentum by the mass, I get the speed. Then I use the components, inverse tangent, to get the angle. Velocity is magnitude and direction, so I had to state both in order to get the answer completely correct. So this is the technique. Drawing it, I believe, creates a very visual representation that is easy to keep track of. Even though looking at it finished now, it looks like a bit of a mess. However, if you recognize where the problem started, you can still follow through this pretty easily. But again, dealing with 2D collisions, momentum is conserved, the axis is independent, so momentum is conserved on each individual axis. This topic basically just combines momentum collisions and vector addition. All right, I'm going to end this here. Have a good day. This is Mr. M, signing off.